Hello and welcome to the lunch edition of NBC News with me, Evelis Chingambi. First, the headlines. President Chagwera expresses satisfaction with the progress of his wealth creation vision for Malawi as evidenced by the success of the National Economic Empowerment Fund, NIF. Comptroller of Statutory Corporations urges commercial statutory corporations to convert their losses into profits to reduce their reliance on government bailouts. And the Reserve Bank of Malawi maintains the policy rate at 26.0%. Thank you for joining us. Now the news in detail. President Dr. Lazarus Jaguera has expressed pride on the progress of his wealth creation vision for Malawi, citing the success of the National Economic Empowerment Fund, NIF. Speaking in Balaka during the 100 billion kwacha loan disbursement celebrations and launch of NIF second phase program, Dr. Jaguera noted that his administration has fulfilled its promise of prioritizing wealth and job creation and food security. Blessings Teleuga with the details. Upon arrival at Balaka Stadium, President Dr. Lazarus Yakwera inspected selected pavilions of beneficiaries of NIF before he launched the second phase loan disbursement drive. In his speech, Dr. Chakwera highlighted that under his administration, NIF has disbursed over 100 billion kwacha in loans to Malawians, generating numerous job opportunities within the four years he has been in power. Dr. Chakwera then announced that the second phase of NIF loan disbursement worth 350 billion kwacha will benefit more people, transforming lives and empowering Malawians economically. The Malawi leader also urged NIF and government officials not to politicize the loans by ensuring everyone benefits regardless of one's political affiliations. Speaking area, Finance Minister Simplex Sichola Banda stated that NIF has positively impacted all sectors of the economy, including generating foreign exchange through increased tobacco farming, among others. Malawi Congress Party MCP Secretary General Esniwa Mkaka praised Dr. Chakura's visionary leadership, citing initiatives like the reintroduction of the Beira Lilongwe train route after a 21 one year break. He said this is a manifestation of government's commitment to transform this country. Jeff Tam Tema, chairperson for NIF, said it is commendable that more people are now servicing their loans and the second phase more people will benefit. We believe that you will continue to support NIF as you desire to uplift the lives of Malawians through this organization. Your Excellency, I will be failing in my role as chairperson of NIF if I do not acknowledge the relentless efforts of the chief executive officer of NIF and his management and the entire staff in ensuring that Malawians in Irurwe in Insanje, Maganjira in Mangoshi, Ligoma Island, and Wenya in Chitiba and many other hard to reach areas are saved. Your Excellency, I am aware that uh, we have gone to every part of the country. And some of the roads, for example, in April, we were in Balaka. We went to rural areas in Balaka. I have seen the areas where they work. In those rural areas, we have groups that received runs. Member of Parliament for Balaka West, Beth Andewere, commended Dr. Chakwera for depoliticizing NIF loans, which has helped people of all political parties to benefit. Blessings, Ijeleuka, MBC, Balaka. Earlier on Thursday, Dr. Jaguera toured Demeter Mega Farm and Portland Cement and commended them for embarking on projects that are in line with government's development agenda. The two entities are engaged in mega farming, infrastructure development, manufacturing and mining respectively. Shibirun Tomozi with the details. The activities of Demeter Mega Farm and Portland Cement in Balaka both complement government's ATM strategy. 
through massive irrigation and use of mechanized equipment, Demeda Mega Farm seamlessly grows beans throughout the year and, like clockwork, delivers on a mission to produce food that can help feed the nation. The farm has demonstrated to the state president that the mega farm's concept is workable and needs to be adopted on a larger scale. The president was also taken through currently the biggest abattoir in the country, which enables Demeter Farm to supply meat products across the country. President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera is upbeat about the concept and is impressed with the work at Demeter Mega Farm. At the new site for the Portland cement plant, President Jaguera witnessed how the factory, once commissioned with production of cement on a larger scale, will increase the company's production levels from 300 tons to 2,000 tons annually. The integrated plant will also produce clinker, which is an essential raw material for cement manufacturing. According to Portland Cement Management, once the plant is operational, the company will save up to 50 million US dollars worth of forex, which they have been spending to import clinker from Zambia. The company has since appealed to President Chakwera to help the company identify forex worth 85 million US dollars without any struggles, so that they can ship machinery into the country by the end of August, before the construction commences in September this year. The construction of the Portland Cement Integrated Plant will boost the mining industry in the country through the mining of limestone whose deposits are already available in Balaga. Chipidon Tumodzi, NBC News, Balaga. The World Bank has commended the government of Malawi for responding quickly in assisting people that have been affected by climatic shocks. Government has provided them with social cash transfers in the light of challenges such as food shortage. World Bank Country Director Nathan Balete said this in Lilongwe when his organization launched the Malawi Economic Monitor, which is an analysis of Malawi's economic performance in the last six months. He said his organization, as well as other international partners, will work with Malawi to ensure that the program is strengthened further to alleviate challenges which the poor are facing. From Lilongwe, Patrick Dembola reports. The Malawi Economic Monitor analyzes economic and structural development issues in Malawi and it comes out twice in a year. The report, which has been compiled by economic experts from the World Bank, has observed that Malawi's economic growth fell short of expectations in 2023 due to climatic shocks such as El Nino, which induced drought, thereby resulting in a weak harvest of staple foods for the country, just as it has been the case with other countries within the region. The report says such climatic shocks have had an impact on the country's macroeconomic situation which needs to be managed to put the economy back on track. The report also says due to such challenges, many households are expected to enter the 2024-2025 lean season with limited food stocks and depleted finances, among other challenges. However, the report has applauded the government of Malawi for its swift action through social protection programs that have helped to cushion the shocks which would have otherwise badly affected the poor in the country. Nathan Berete is World Bank Country Director for Malawi, Tanzania, Zambia and Zimbabwe. We commend the government of Malawi and all its partners in what has been achieved under this program. Um, what we see was just 10 years ago that the number of people that were benefiting from this program was uh, uh, a fraction of almost what is today, which is 1.2 million people. And we think this is super, super important because uh, social protection and adaptive safety nets not only provide um, an immediate response mechanism for poor and vulnerable, but it also stimulates uh, the, the economy more, uh, more broadly. So in addition to protecting livelihoods, it also has a way of supporting the broader economy. Minister of Gender, Jean Sendeza, says the report will help to guide Malawi to improve further social protection programs. She says the country will strengthen social protection programs until it gets out of the situation it is in, just like it has been the case with the surrounding countries. Due to the issues of the economic crisis, that's why we are saying that the social cash transfer is the best way to go and there is need to do more. And in doing more, we have to learn because in the report, we have seen that our colleagues in Zambia, in Mozambique, they were in the same situation as we are in, uh, as we are talking, but they have moved 
a step forward. So we have to learn from our colleagues on how they have done, uh, on, have, on how they have you know, managed to get out of the, uh, the crises, the economic crisis that they are in. Moving forward, the World Bank has advised Malawi to strengthen its social protection programs by expanding coverage and accurately identifying the needy so as to better respond to the objectives of the program. Patrick Dambula, MPC News, Lilongwe. Comptroller of Statutory Corporations, Peter Simbani, has urged commercial statutory corporations to convert their losses into profits to reduce their reliance on government bailouts. He made this call during his keynote address at the Corporate Governance Orientation Workshop held at Nkobola Lodge in Mangoji. Simbani emphasized that entities such as ESCOM and the Water Board were established to be self-sustaining and operationally independently, but at times they asked for bailout money from Treasury. Details in this report. The Board of Directors of various statutory corporations are convening at a corporate governance workshop in Mangochi to refresh their knowledge on critical issues relevant to their organizations and roles. Opening the workshop, Comptroller of Statutory Corporations, Peter Simbani, praised the organizations for their strong performance. However, he urged commercial entities to find effective ways to turn their losses into profits to reduce their reliance on government bailouts. Those that are classified as commercial entities, they are coming back to government to say, please, uh, bail us on, give us a bail out on this. Give us a bail. So that's the message that I was trying to emphasize, that when government was creating them, the intention that they should make money, but that since they are commercial entities, it is the expectation of government as a shareholder to receive a dividend. Because you, when you create the company, it is expected that are going to uh, uh, reap from the profits that they make so that you also uh, see the uh, benefit of having uh, such a company. During her presentation, Ombudsman Grace Malera emphasized on the importance of maintaining integrity, particularly in the recruitment process for her positions. The key message today was they need to know uh, the ambit within which they are supposed to operate, uh, the basic principles that they are supposed to follow, issues that they should avoid unreasonable decisions, they should make fair decisions, they should follow due process, and so on and so forth, including the rules of natural justice. Reverend Vasco Kajipapa, the board chairperson for the Malawi Broadcasting Corporation, MBC, acknowledged the importance of upholding integrity at all times and stated that MBC is performing well in this regard. I am proud to say that uh, the integrity at MPC is uh, evident. People should be able to speak, even behind us, that we are doing a good job. I know that we are not yet there, so we are yet to improve the areas that we might be lacking behind. Board members and senior officers from fully subvented, semi-subvented and commercial statutory corporations are participating in the workshop. Dave Umar, NBC News, Mangochi. Malawi will next week host its first ever National Housing Symposium from 29 to 30 July in Lelongwe. Speaking after touring the site where the symposium will be held, Minister of Lands Del Segumba said government is committed to addressing gaps in the housing sector to promote the provision of sustainable and quality housing and efficient urban development services in the country. The theme for the symposium is sustainable and affordable housing in pursuit of Malawi 2063. Details in this report filed by Yamigan Simtoe being read by Helix Manemba. Speaking after inspecting the site, Minister of Lands Deus Gumba said the symposium will accord government and its stakeholders space to review the country's housing policy to create an enabling environment that will encourage provision of quality, sustainable and affordable housing for income groups in line with the Malawi 2063. A very important platform where we want to tell Malawians all of the demonstrate uh, looking at 2063 as to how as a country we want to move in terms of uh, construction of houses looking at Division 2063 to provide affordable houses, but also very resilient in terms of the climate changes that we're experiencing as a country. 
The symposium will gather different players in the housing sector, including the Catholic Relief Services Malawi, whose country director is Sekai Modon. This symposium is very important in Malawi because the housing needs are very great and it's important for different partners to come together and, and, and look at ways in which they can construct houses for many of the vulnerable people in Malawi, considering that Malawi is impacted negatively in a big way due to climate shocks that happen from time to time. Earlier on, the minister toured a site where Malawi Housing Corporation is expected to construct its head office in Lirongwe. Board chairperson for Malawi Housing Corporation is Reverend Jalek David Kajipanda. Lately we have moved from Blanta where we had the head office, but because of maybe some administrative challenges, we felt like we would be better situated at the center. So coming in Lirongwe, it would mean it would be easier even to reach out to the north, to the east, uh, to the south and, and even to the west. So the head of state has honored us because he is now the one who is going to do the groundbreaking. So it's just coinciding exactly with the very time that we are having this symposium. President Dr. Lazarus Makathi Chakwera is expected to attend the first ever national housing symposium to be hosted by Habitat for Humanity. This is the launch edition of NBC News and you're with me, Evelis Chingambi. Remember, you can access all MBC digital platforms by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your TV screen. Stories making the headlines this afternoon. President Jaguera expresses satisfaction with the progress of his wealth creation vision for Malawi as evidenced by the success of the National Economic Empowerment Fund, NIF. Comptroller of Stagiary Corporations urges commercial stagiary corporations to converge their losses into profits to reduce their reliance on government bailouts. And the Reserve Bank of Malawi maintains the policy rate at 26.0%. Modern day life is all about setting all following the latest trend. Be it in fashion, technology, yeah. art and craft. Because it's either you're trending I got or you're not trending at all. MBC. Inspiring the nation. Welcome back. Concerned teachers of Malawi have expressed satisfaction with government's quick response to their calls regarding the teacher registration process in the country. Speaking in a long way, the group's secretary, Aziz Losa, said, among other issues, they requested government through Teachers Council of Malawi to address issues of payment as well as system accessibility. He, however, pleaded with the authorities to consider employing auxiliary teachers on a permanent basis. We are happy that the government has uh, recruited about 4,200 auxiliary teachers. But just recruiting them on a temporary basis, we think that is not secure. So we are asking the ministry to employ them fully. They have to be on a permanent job so that they have to secure their jobs. And uh, upon recruiting, uh, recruiting them permanently, these 4,200 teachers, we wanted them also to add more auxiliary teachers so that they should uh, reduce this issue of uh, learner pupil ratio. In our schools, we have that big gap between teacher and learner ratio. So we wanted them to recruit more auxiliary teachers on top of this being recruited permanently. In other words, you are saying that you are satisfied with the response from Teachers Castle. Yes, uh, we are satisfied with the response from Teachers Castle. We say so because what we wrote in our petition has been answered. So we don't have more questions. That question we have to Tears Council is now to sensitize zone by zone 
school by school because they have managed to reach to our districts. So we are here to ask them to sensitize zone by zone and school by school. The Ministry of Gender says partnerships are crucial in the development of early childhood education in the country. Deputy Director of Child Affairs in the Ministry of Gender, Justin Hamira, met the sentiments in Blanta during the launch of early childhood development textbooks by Tsuga Publishing Company. Chisomo Break reports. According to Hamela, the country has over 13,000 early childhood development centers that need support for more wishes and other stakeholders. Just this year, we are about to complete 150 model CBCCs that are being supported by World Bank. But our plea to uh, the development partners that we really needed to support these CBCCs and ensure that uh, they are provided with faith teaching and learning material. As you are aware, in CBCC, children learn through play. It is for this reason that Zuka Publishing Company Limited is coming in to provide the much needed support towards early childhood education sector through the development and publication of textbooks for those in this level. Maureen Masamba is Zuka Publishing Limited manager. The impact for these books are going to be, is going to be big. As I indicated, there's been a gap in terms of uh, teaching and learning materials at that level. There hasn't been any book which, has, which were written and uh, prescribed in line with the ECD curriculum. So these are the first publications that we have launched today that have been uh, written in line with the ECD curriculum, which means that uh, CBCs private nursery schools which are supposed to use the ECD curriculum have now the material which they can, which they can use. The national ECD policy states that proper attention to a child's survival, optimum growth and stimulation are foundations for human development. Chisomo Break, NBC News, Blanta. The Reserve Bank of Malawi's Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, has maintained the policy rate at 26.0% at its third meeting for the year. The policy rate is a benchmark rate for other rates such as the loan bird and interbank rates. According to the chairperson of the MPC, Wilson Banda, the resolution was arrived at following consideration of the easing pressure on inflation. More in this report. According to Banda, the committee observed that the low crop harvest in the 2023-2024 season put pressure on inflation, but the non-food determinant has responded well to the tight monetary policy stance they have taken. The decision means members of the public should not expect upward adjustments in interest rates offered by commercial banks on the market. The committee has also maintained the Lombard rate, which is the rate at which financial institutions borrow from the bank, as well as the levels of revenue banks are required to have in their reserves at the central bank. The Lombard rate has been maintained at 20 basis points above the policy rate. The committee also resolved to maintain the liquidity reserve ratio, LRR, at 3.75% for foreign currency deposits and 8.75% for domestic currency. According to Banda, maintaining a tight monetary policy stance should help lessen inflationary pressure while ensuring downward inflation movements towards the medium-term objective of 5%. The committee is hopeful of positive economic growth ahead owing to favorable performances in some sectors such as construction, manufacturing, mining and quarrying, as well as real estate. Elin Jimoyo, NBC News, Blanta. And in sports, Sanford Tourism has reaffirmed its dedication to improving sports in the country as part of its social responsibility initiatives. The company's products marketing and communications manager, Widen Sona, emphasized this commitment during a prize presentation at a golf tournament held in Blanter Sports held at Blanter Sports Club. Praise Majawa has compiled this report being read by Norbert Jemison. Speaking in an interview, 
Nsona said they are to organize a similar tournament in Mzuzu. Um, we resume sponsoring golf because it's been a long time since Sunsburg sponsored golf. Um, we are actually recovering um, from COVID. We have, I mean, it's been quite some time, but we've seen that, okay, this is the, the best time we've recovered. So our recovery was not um, from our own making. Um, it came from our customers. So we saw it's best to give back to our customers who are golfers. Um, so... It is just a way of giving back to the customers that are helping us, that have helped us to recover. The tournament saw the participation of 71 golfers from Blanta Sports Club. In the men's category, George Damson emerged victorious while Maria Tandwe was the champion in the women's category. Damson attributed his success to thorough preparations. I just woke up um, with a positive mind. I think that really helps in golf. Um, I was positive that today I'll, I'll get a good score. I haven't been a golfer for a long time. Uh, just slightly over a year um, and you know for me to have that kind of uh, confidence um, I think also helped me to go into today's game expecting to, to play well. I didn't expect to win but I expected to play well but when I realized I think later on in the, in the game that I was actually playing well uh, it gave me even more confidence to play well. On the second hole I blinked, I didn't get a point uh, that would have put me off track um, but I think from the third hole uh, up to the last hole uh, my golf really came to, to the fore, and yeah, uh, I'm here now. Nyako Konsona claimed the top spot in the seniors category. The winners were awarded services from Sunbed Tourism and cash prizes. And that's it from our newsroom this afternoon. A recap of our top stories. President Chagwera expresses satisfaction with the progress of his wealth creation vision for Malawi as evidenced by the success of the National Economic Empowerment Fund, NIF. Comptroller of Statutory Corporations urges commercial statutory corporations to convert their losses into profits to reduce their reliance on government bailouts. And the Reserve Bank of Malawi maintains the policy rate at 26.0%. For more on these and other stories, follow MBC Digital on Facebook, Instagram and X and also our website mbc.mw. Remember, you can access all MBC Digital platforms by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your TV screen. I am Evelyn Stingambe. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.